Hi, uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Pratik Gupta and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today we are going to bring a second lecture of our series for the current affairs part. So in the last lecture we covered the current affairs from uh, 1st of October till uh, 14th of October. So today we are going to cover the current affairs part from 15th of October to, to, uh, to 21st October that means till today. So this week I would say a lot of news have been appeared uh, and uh, all the news are very important from the examination perspective. Okay, so our stress will be in terms of uh, telling you all the news plus also I will tell you in uh, brief ki what these things are all about. So some kind of basic discussion will also be there about each and every news that appeared this week from the examination perspective. So let's start about it and thank you really uh, and thank you so much you know because the kind of response I got for the first lecture was really really encouraging for me and that's why I have decided to simply reduce the length from 15 days to simply a week okay so that you people will be able to get the lectures even more oftenly and you will be able to cover the things even more fastly okay so let's initiate and let's start the first round of news that appeared on 15th of october so as you know on 15th of october the prime minister of our country announced about something called digital banking units so point is what what is digital banking units and why these are being started by government of india in the recent time like I'm pretty sure as you people must be aware about a term called financial inclusion. What is financial inclusion? It's very simple. It means that each and every household in case of our country should have at least one bank account. Okay, they should have at least one bank account. Now you know this thing, if the bank account is being there with the each and every household, then the biggest benefit is what? That the savings can be provided over there. And when the savings will be there, that money will be used for the purpose of investment that is the main purpose of having more and more bank accounts in case of our country so as you know when we people are discussing these things in our gdp topic so we're discussing about a model also called harold Dahmer model where i'm telling simply student that uh, if there is a more amount of savings happening in the country it will lead to more amount of capital formation okay now the point is what how these digital banking units are kind of being different from the normal and conventional banking branches that we have in case of our country See, first of all, I'll tell you how many units have been announced. So, in total, 75 digital banking units have been announced by the government of India because in this year, budget of 2022-23, the government of India in the uh, budget announced that we are going to open up around 75 DSBs all over the country. <clears throat> so, now they provided that uh, where are these uh, branches are going to be provided. We have a place called Leh, Srinagar, Lakshadweep, Aswal, Kota, Nenital and Lucknow. So these are few, uh, I would say, the areas which are being mentioned by government of India where these uh, banking units are going to be provided. Okay. Now the point is what when these units will be provided, how they are going to work. Like, but before initiating discussion about uh, that how they are going to work, I am telling you, as many as 11 banks in public sector, that means the government bank, and 12 in the private sector, and one small finance bank are participating in terms of setting up these units. See. Now the point is what how these units are being kind of different from the other normal and conventional banking branches. Like you must have seen uh, normally when you people have been going to a particular bank branch then there you must have find that certain people have been sitting over there. You have a counter to deposit money, you have a counter to withdraw money, you have a counter to simply do and avail the other banking services. Now in these digital banking units they are going to divide the branch into two parts like one is called as a self-service mode and the second is called as a digital assistance zone now how these two things are going to help you like currently as you know that we people are having multiple ways by which we can do the banking like we have internet banking we have mobile banking then we have you know the uh, the kind of atm uh, uh, banking then we have different kind of banking are being provided now you must have also seen currently when you go to any bank branch there you must have find that there is a machine over there you, where you can deposit money without the help of any human being. Then you also know that you also have the machines where you can simply print your passbooks and the other thing. So basically in the self-service mode of this particular digital banking units, what they are going to provide? In the one part of the branch, they are going to simply establish the machines where the people can simply avail all the banking services of their own. That means they will go for the self-service mode. Like as you know, 
when you people are being going to ser certain restaurants to eat something they've been providing you that we have a self service that you have to go to the counter you have to pay the money then you need to simply collect the order and then you need to simply take the food back to your seat and then you need to eat the same kind of things will be applied here also so point is what there they will simply install the machines like one machine for the purpose of uh, depositing cash one uh, machine is for the purpose of withdrawing money that is atm machines then you have the machines for the purpose of uh, printing the passbooks then you have the computers uh, where you can simply log in and you can also do the online banking so point is what computers will be there laptops will be there all the machines will be there by which you can simply self operate you know all the banking services over there so the point is what you need to be good in terms of having the knowledge that how you need to operate all these machines so point is what what the government is going to do as a part of these units that initially few people will be deputed over there who will simply help you out in terms of understanding that how you can simply you know go and avail the facilities through these machines that how you can withdraw money how you can simply deposit money and the other things you know the pointers and moreover on the computers also they will also help you out in terms of that how you can do the net banking how you can transfer money how you can simply receive money that is what all the services you are going to get then after that the second part of the branch will be known as a digital assistance zone under this you can say these are kind of a normal banking units only under that the people will be there to help you in terms of opening up the account so you it's not like that you have lot of people there so you have very few people there who are going to simply help you that how you can simply open up the account with the help of aadhar card and the other so once you will open up the account then you will be provided all the things with you like atm card debit card check book then you can say you have this uh, passbook and the other then they will simply tell you that how you can simply avail all the services through something called self services mode over there so the concept is very simple that first of all they will make you aware that how to use these things and then once you've been kind of very good in terms of using all the services then you can say dependence on these will go down and then you will be able to use the services of your own so the point is what the government wants to make the people financially literate so the point is what what kind of question can be asked by upsc in the examination from these that how the digital banking units will help in terms of increasing the financial literacy and the financial inclusion in case of our country this kind of question can be put up by the upsc in the mains examination and secondly what kind of question they can ask in the prelims examination they will simply provide you that how that consider the following statements about the digital banking units and then they will give you certain statements and if you are aware about all these things then certainly you will be able to answer that part so that is the first news of the current affairs from 15th of october to 21st of october i hope that has been clear to all of you then after that the second news is about the asset reconstruction company regarding the ibc law that is what insolvency and bankruptcy code 2016 so that news again appeared on 15th of october now the point is what what this news was all about that i need to tell you in very brief here see it's very simple currently when any company is not able to pay the money back to the banks and the other then what happened the banks can initiate something called insolvency of that company insolvency of that company means what that they can simply approach the national company law tribunal ki sir this company is not able to give able to give our money back so we want this company to be liquidated and once the assets of the company will be sold then we will be able to get our money back that means the bank wants the company to be closed and they want to simply sell the assets in the market so that money can be recovered getting what i'm trying to say so point is what here the change is what now see how these things are actually working in the market imagine that uh, there is a one company called xyz who was supposed to be sold in the market because they are not supposed they are not able to pay the money back to the bank so the bank went to the nclt and the nclt have given the permission that now you can simply sell the company in the market now point is what when the company will be sold in the market then the two ways that either you can simply sell all the assets of the company 
like you can say assets they have the building they have machines they have that you will simply sell all the assets in the market and then you will recover the money and then you will pay back getting what i'm saying so it's very simple that first of all you will simply sell each and every asset one by one like the people like imagine if a company who's an institute imagine like imagine there is a one coaching institute is going to be closed so under that what they're going to do they're going to simply sell all the chairs they're going to sell all the screens they're going to sell all the infrastructure and then whatever amount of money they will be able to get back they will simply use it for the purpose of repayment of the people who lended money to the company okay and the second way is what that how you will be able to get the money back like imagine if that institute is going to be purchased by some other institute then again you can say the company who's going to purchase it they are going to pay to the lender okay, this is what you need to simply you know kind of uh, uh, the company need to pay you so instead the company so we are going to pay you out about this so point is what that there are two ways by which the company can be sold or you can say the money can be realized that first of all that you will sell the assets and get the money and pay back and the second is what did, did you will simply sell the company to somebody and the company will simply pay you back and now you have a new owner of that particular company now the point is what the government of india has not now allowed the asset reconstruction company what are the arcs arcs are basically asset reconstruction company which are being provided by a law called surfacey law okay in the name of surfacey what is the full form securitization and reconstruction of financial assets and enforcement of securities interest act 2002 under this what is the point there are two ways if somebody is not paying the money back to the company like there are two ways if the company is not paying the money back to the bank then what the bank can do first of all whatever things that you have pledged that means to the bank the bank will simply sell in the market and then the bank will be able to recover the money and the second is what that in case if the bank is not able to recover the money by selling the asset then the bank will be able to sell these bad loans to something called arcs like you must have heard heard about something called bad bank in the recent time that is the narcl if you remember we also discussed these things in the other videos of our youtube channel so point is what that the bad banks will be able to simply buy those assets now here what is the change is being given by government of india by providing an amendment to the ibc law and that is what earlier you can say when any company was being sold in the market under the ibc structure then these companies were not allowed to bid for it so imagine there is a one company called xyz the example that we took and now the nclt have given the permission that this company can be sold in the market or you can simply sell the asset and you can recover the money and now you can say the insolvency professional is inviting the people that who wants to acquire the company so point is what earlier arcs were not allowed to bid for the company to buy but now they have allowed the arc to simply come forward and then they can buy the company so in a way when they will buy the company they will also become the owner of the company getting what i'm trying to say so now once they will be able to buy the company now you can see all the assets of the that particular company belongs to the arc and now arc will be able to recover the money from the market that is the second news so what they are saying the reserve bank of india moved to let asset reconstruction companies to participate as a resolution applicants under the ibc as an overdue reform this will enable arcs to buy stressed assets of failed companies instead of buying only bad loans from the bank so as i told you earlier they were only allowed to buy the bad loans from the bank now they will be allowed to simply bid for the stressed assets and they will be able to buy it the revised rules uh, requires arcs to have a minimum net owed funds of this much amount of money that means they should have at least this much amount of capital with them then they will be able to simply qualify to bid for the companies which are being sold under the ipcs getting what i'm saying so in a very simple term if i'll tell you if there is a old company which is not working or it's in a dead dead mode or you can say company which is supposed to be closed so the arcs wants to bid for it and they want to buy it so now you can say they are being allowed and they can go forward and they can simply buy it that is what has been given as a part of new change so you can say again under this the stressed assets of the banks will go down because now the arcs will be able to buy and they will be able to recover the money getting okay? that is the second important news of this particular week now let's go to the third one which is very important from the means perspective because what the united nations said in the recent time 
that India lifted 415 million out of poverty in 15 years. So what is being given by the, uh, by the United Nations? In a historical change for India, 415 million people existed multi-dimensional poverty in the country in 15 years between 2005-06 to 2009-2021. to 2021. Okay, The UN said, the incidence of poverty in the country dropped from 55.1%. Imagine this much number of people were below poverty line as per the multi-dimensional poverty index, which is reduced to 16.4% in 2019 to 2021. As for the latest index compiled jointly by United Nations Development Program and Oxford Poverty and Human Development Initiative. So that is a combined efforts of these two, UNDP and moreover the Oxford Poverty and Human Development Initiative. Getting now, see the next point. Of the nearly 415 million, that means around 41.5 crore people who are out of poverty in 15 years before the COVID-19 pandemic. So do remember that is not the latest number because you know this thing, a lot of people in the COVID-19 pandemic, they fell into the poverty because they were not having any kind of work and they were having nothing to eat at that point of time. So roughly 275 million did so between 5, 6 to 15, 16. That means around 27.5 crore people came out of poverty between these 10 year period and the remaining 14 crore people came out of poverty between 15, 16 and 19, 20. That means between these five year period. Okay. So in a way you can say almost equal amount of people are being coming out of poverty. So you can say every five years around 14 crore people are being coming out of poverty in case of our country. So based on 2020 population data, India has the largest number of poor people worldwide 228.9 billion. So imagine despite such a huge number of people are being coming out of poverty, we still have around 23 crore people who are being leaving below poverty line as per this particular index. That means almost you can say around, uh, you know, 10 Australia are poor in case of our country. Okay. Moreover, what they are providing that out of this 23 crore people, around 20.5 crore people who are being below poverty line, they belongs to only rural area. That means the majority number of people who are poor are under the rural area. So the, that is a priority area of the government to simply take the people out of poverty. Now, that is one of the points that you can use as a part of your mains examination. Now, the second thing is what? The index which they have mentioned here is again kind of very important from the examination perspective. So you people should know what is this multi-dimensional poverty index. What all indicators are being taken into account to provide the poverty incidence. So they have given here three factors. Health, education and living standards. So under this they are providing nutrition is having a content of or you can say weightage of one-sixth. Child mortality, one-sixth. Year of schooling, one-sixth. School attendance, one-sixth. And then after that, these are the living standards part. Cooking fuel, 1-18th, sanitation, 1-18th, drinking water, 1-18th, electricity, 1 by 18, housing, 1 by 18, and assets, again, 1 by 18. So all these factors have been taken into account to provide the multi-dimensional poverty index. So you people should be aware about it, ki what all three dimensions have been taken into account to provide the holistic approach to know the poverty in case of any country. What are these? Health, education, living standard. Okay, when you talk about the weightage here, then you can say one six plus one sixth here, that means one third here, one third here, and then you can say one third here. Okay, so in a way, when you simply do the total, it will become simply one here. Okay, that is what they have provided. So you people should know about this index and moreover, who are basically publishing it and who are these? UNDP and moreover, the Oxford Poverty and Human Development Initiative, these two are providing together getting so that is a good amount of number but do remember we still don't have any official number given by government of india that how many people are living below poverty line in case of our country the last estimate that we have is of 2011-12 that was given by government of india as per the tendulkar committee report and as per that around 21 percent people are living below poverty line so if we go by this particular scenario then you can say from 21 percent this number has been reduced to around 16% something. So only around 5% reduction is being there. Getting So that is what about the third important news of the last week. Now let's move to the next one. Now this particular thing is a very very good initiative I would say currently announced by the government of India that is known as a one nation one fertilizer. 
like you have one nation one ration card then you have one nation one tax so many you know initiatives have been taken by government in the last few years but this is again one of the new initiative which they named as a one nation one fertilizer and what is the scheme name so that is known as a one nation one fertilizer or pradhan mantri bhartiya jan urvarak pariyojana was launched by the central government under the scheme all the types of fertilizer whether urea dap npk then you can say map muratif potash whatever it is will be sold under the single brand name called bharat so fertilizers back will only have a brand name called bharat here and there is no name of any company any distributor any retailer anything will be written over there like as you people are aware from 2010 onwards government of india announced something called nutrient based subsidy under this you can say not only urea then we have npks the four macro fertilizer plus something called zinc and boron will be offered by government as a part of subsidized fertilizer okay that is what the government of india provided under this what the government of india will do they will simply measure the soil quality of each and every part of the country and for this purpose as you know they have what they have a soil health card scheme so once they will be able to know what are the deficiencies we have in the different part of the country in terms of soil regarding the nutrients then accordingly the fertilizer will be designed and will be provided over there now currently what is the problem as you have multiple manufacturers for fertilizers in case of our country and moreover we are also importing lot of fertilizers from outside so point is what as you know that certain companies are offering more margin and some ten companies are offering comparatively less margin when it comes to providing the fertilizer so point is what retailers are always in benefit when they will sell the fertilizer of a company which is offering more amount of margin over there and because of this what happened certain companies are not being able to kind of cop up and then after that what happened you know they are being simply losing the market getting what i'm trying to say so now under the government of india saying that instead of writing the name of the retailer over there that which is the company who's the manufacturer who is the uh, you know wholesaler and the other there is nothing like this will be mentioned there is only one thing that is bharat will be written over there and then after that you can say that will be sold in the market so under this you can say the people or the retailer will not be able to know that which company is basically making it they will only write the composition the what all content you have in the bag then what is the price of it that's all they will mention so in a way there is no discrimination that means one nation one brand for all the fertilizers in case of our country getting what i'm trying to say so this is something which has been initiated by government of india i would say a very good initiative and that will also lead to better utilization of available resources in terms of using in the field for the better productivity of different different crops in case of our country okay that is again one of the new initiative now let's move to the next one see due to this particular news that appeared in the newspaper regarding the global hunger index this one more index which was mentioned at the same point of time but somehow that was ignored by the people the reason is what that as a global hunger index was in news and lot of discussion was going on so that's why people simply kind of ignored that and they simply jumped to that but i'm telling you that is again a very important index from the examination point of view they might ask you in your prelims examination so basically this index is showing what this index is showing about the social security of people so security in what sense like once the people will be kind of retire whether they will have a kind of a steady income or not okay now you know this thing those people who are working in the public sector they are contributing certain amount of their money as a part of gratuity they are being you know kind of contributing certain amount of money as a pf and the other and when they basically kind of retire they will be able to get a good amount of money in one go or they can simply opt it in the form of pension also so in a way their future is being kind of secured but in case of private people you know those people who being part of informal sector and the other their future is not very much secured over there okay so in this particular index they have been trying to kind of cover this particular thing that when the people are getting retired that what is the percentage of people who are being able to get some kind of, uh, kind of a social security in terms of steady income till the time they will simply die okay so what they providing that out of 44 countries so basically whatever 44 countries they have been taken into account to provide this particular index 
this particular index is covering almost 65 percent of the world population do remember so they are saying that out of 44 country india is ranking at 41st that means our ranking is really really poor in terms of providing a social security benefit to people okay now if you compare india's last year ranking so it was 40th among 43 nations last year now point is what what kind of factors have been taken into account to provide the ranking so under this they have three things adequacy sustainability and moreover the integrity so if we talk about the india's kind of uh, standing in you in all these things then we our score is 33.5 41.8 and 61 now if we talk about the countries which are having the highest amount of uh, index value it is basically a country called iceland 84.7 followed by country called Netherlands 84.6, then Denmark 82. Thailand had the lowest index value at 41.7. Okay. India had an overall index value of 44.2 in 2022, up from 43.3 in 2021, but lower than the reading of 45.7 in 2020, when it was ranked 34 out of 39 nations. That means our score has been kind of, you know, reduced. And then you can say it is further increased. But if you compare this index value with 2020 number, then you can say that is still lower. So, and that, what is the reason behind it? You know this thing, it is because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Okay. Now, who is basically publishing it? So, there is a one CFA institute called Mercer CFA Global, you know, institute who is basically providing this particular index. So, that index you people should be kind of known about it because that was in news for the first time. And there might be possibility UPSC will make a question from this in your prelims examination. Getting now. Let's move to the next part, which was again in news and kind of a very controversial again. So I am going to tell you very brief about it and whatever stand is being given by government and is actually right or wrong here. Some basic information I will provide you. See, first of all, this global hunger index is putting us under something called serious hunger problem. So, they are saying that we have a serious hunger issue in case of our country. So, four factors are being taken into account and that is the weightage, one-third, one-sixth, one-sixth and one-third. Okay. Normally, you know, as soon as this index name is being used as a global hunger index, what people got to believe that it is talking about the hunger level of people who have been living in a particular nation, that whether they are being able to get food to eat or not. That is what the people are being able to take the inference out of it as soon as you know the name of this index is being used anywhere. So as soon as the ranking appeared that we are at 107th out of 121 nation, then the people said that last year we were at 101 and this year we are now it's 107. So that means we are the problems are getting even more worse in case of our country when it comes to the hunger. That means people are not having food to eat for even one time or two times. Now, if you talk about the four factors taken into account. Then the weightage of hunger here, I would say, is only one third out of one. And what is that? Undernourishment, the share of the population with insufficient caloric intake. Okay. Now, as you know, in case of our country, if you're consuming around 2400 calories in case of rural areas and 2100 calories in case of urban areas, then you can say you are having good amount of calorie intake. Otherwise, you are having some sort of problem with your food you know, kind of pre preferences. Now, if you talk about the remaining three things which have been given as a part of it, that is only concentrating the people or you can say kind of kids who are under the age of five years. That is not taking into account the complete set of population. So, under this, if we talk about the second factor is child stunting. What does it mean? It's more about the height in comparison to the age. So, if the height is not good enough, then you can say good amount of nutrition is not being given to a kid. That's why they are being kind of stunted. So, as you can see, the share of children under age 5 who have low height for their age reflecting chronic undernutrition. The third point is child vasting. The share of children under age 5 who have low weight for their height. That means if the kid is basically kind of a good amount of height and the weight is basically not there, then you can say again it's a shine of undernourishment or you can say acute undernourishment what is the weightage here one sixth again 
and then the third point is basically child mortality that how many kids are basically dying before their fifth birthday so under this you can say they have nutritional issue health issue you know healthcare problems and the other and that's why the people are or they can say the kids are dying so the weightage is how much one third so do remember this particular index is talking about hunger in only one particular one the remaining thing they've been talking about the you know again obviously it's a part of hunger only but that is only being related to what the kids under the age of five that is not including the complete population okay that's why you can say as you know under the corona pandemic or against the covid 19 pandemic as you know the people have been facing massive issues in terms of you know kind of food availability and moreover in the recent time as you also know that due to food inflation and the other the country is suffering and moreover poor are suffering even more in case of our country so that's why you can say our ranking has been gone down from 101 to 107 so whatever explanation has been given by government of india i won't say that has been kind of wrong the government is also being kind of right to that extent but the point is what the way media is highlighting the way people are being perceiving about the index that is not the right way so you should know ki what all factors are being taken into account to provide the you know the hunger index value and the other and then you're supposed to simply conclude out of it getting what i'm trying to say so that is what we have so do remember currently india's rank is one of the worst at a global level i am not saying that the remaining three factors are not something which we are supposed to be concerned about we're supposed to be concerned about it a lot but the way people are being you know kind of taking this index that is not the right way i would say when it comes to this particular issue that is one again a kind of a massive problem in case of any country and whatever is being said by them is being kind of correct when it compare with the other countries obviously getting what i'm trying to say this is what they're being providing so that is about the global hunger index provided by this particular agency so that is all the current affairs news i would say which are being relevant in this particular week though we have so many other information about the wpi index that the inflation has been reducing you know then you have so many uh, news about the uh, stock market then you have news about uh, uh, you know the other things but the point is what these what i thought kind of very important from the examination perspective and that's why these things have been provided you so thank you very much for watching this video and please please subscribe my channel and if you like the video then do like the video and please if you think that this video is uh, or these current affairs series is benefiting you then please spread in your group tell the student that this particular news is this kind of videos are being appearing every news so they should take the benefits out of it and moreover as i told you last time that if you people wants to take a benefit you know of uh, knowing that what all contents including my youtube channel and the other then please subscribe to my telegram channel and then secondly if you want to simply have a one-to-one -one direct chat with me then you can simply join here you know this particular group and there we can simply chat regarding your you know studies you know uh, regarding whatever issues that you people have been uh, facing while preparing for upsc okay thank you very much and moreover if you people are also being looking for a very good test series where you will be able to update your you know kind of uh, you know you can improve your uh, writing skills and the other then you can also join the test series so i have given my phone number and the other things on my youtube channel and moreover if you want to simply send me an email then you can simply email on this particular email address pratik gupta 2001 at the rate gmail.com so slowly slowly like earlier as i said in my test series i will only focus on the economy and more about the polity part but now i have some other people who are also being you know kind of uh, joining me so they will be able to take care the geography part so now you can say i can also provide the test regarding geography and moreover about the environment also so slowly slowly you know more things will be kind of provided so stay tuned for more videos and thank you very much for watching the video. See you soon. Take care.